I'm really excited for our topic for this video because it's something that I've read multiple times and I'm still trying to really figure out my true feelings on it, right? Uh, this video today we got is going to be just a, a, an analysis and my own interpretation of uh, Miyamoto Musashi's teachings in the Dokodo or the way of walking alone. And the Dokodo is basically an itemized list of 21 ideas that Musashi believed to be of the highest importance as one makes their way through life. It's reported that Musashi wrote these commandments about a week before his death along with the legendary book of Five Rings where he discusses his philosophies on combat and requirements he feels were mandates to follow the path of the warrior. And the reason the Dokodo is so interesting to me isn't only because of my interest in Musashi as a person, but also the depth of thought he left in these philosophies and how they can be interpreted in so many different ways and there's just so much to find in them. To live as Musashi did is, to me, one of the most extreme conditions a human could find themselves in. To voluntarily place, voluntarily, excuse me, place oneself in as many duels and wartime skirmishes as Musashi did during his lifetime, that takes a level of hardening that almost no human being will ever achieve. And just having a glimpse into the psyche of a man who was able to live his life in such outstanding circumstances is something that is amazing. And I'm really glad that he left us just something to kind of give us that little bit of a peek into way, the way that he thought and the philosophy that he had that allowed him to survive and thrive even as long as he did so without too much more hold up let's just jump in and kind of discuss the discuss Musashi's Dokodo and examine his final pieces of parting wisdom to his students and his followers and that's also some an important point to make is when it comes to the Dokodo this wasn't a uh, excerpt that he left for mass consumption right like his this teaching that he left was it's said to have been left for his um his best student or like his, his number one student it was sort of like a, a last parting gift as mentor to passing the torch to the what he saw as the arbiter of the next generation so it's something that's personal and something that he wasn't necessarily expecting well he wasn't at all he wasn't expecting this to be a thing that blew up and that a bunch of people were gonna read and he, he didn't use this as a way to try to basically meme his philosophy to the rest of the world he didn't leave this as a way to, to try to get society to see the way he thought and put people on the path that he was walking this was very intimate and something extremely personal and once again something i feel like that adds to the the interest and the mystique of the reading by itself as well so let's kind of get into it we'll go through all of the teaching the 21 ideas listed uh i'll read them off and then we'll kind of just analyze and discuss it or i'll analyze kind of my thoughts on it and i would love in the comments to just see your guys' thoughts on this like how you interpreted it and if you've read this kind of just give me a summary or a discussion about like what the heck you took from this right because it's going to be different for all of us and to me that's one of the most interesting aspects of this whole thing is just seeing how other people internalize this and what they thought that he was trying to express through communicating the first tenet of the Dokodo states, one should not turn their back on the various ways of this world. And how I interpret that teaching is, although it seems pretty broad on the surface, I think at least the way I'm what I'm gathering from it is that one shouldn't be blind to the realities of the way things work. Right. There's what we want. And then there's what reality actually is, right? And I think sometimes we get caught up on our own personal desires or the way that we want things to work themselves out. And rather than working with the pieces of what the world's giving us or what's actually available, we get caught up in basically what we think should happen, how we think things should be, 
and the world doesn't operate on shoulds right it works on this is what is and this is what not is so to me the first teaching is just about not going through life with the expectation of like what you want to happen and basically seeing the world for what it is and operating within that and the second states one should not scheme for physical pleasure and the reason i think he discussed this tenet right the reason that a person should not scheme or attempt to screw people over for physical pleasure is i think basically it it creates weakness in you right and what i mean by that is if everything that you do is just a plot to make yourself feel good or have a pleasurable experience then one like you're deceiving yourself and that goes against the first tenet that he talks about but also in that deception you're making yourself weaker because you will only do things that bring you some sort of like immediate pleasure or a pretty like shallow gratifications and some things that are necessary things that are important are often difficult they don't uh, they don't usually immediately give you immediate physical pleasure or gratification and if you only operate within doing things that do bring that to you there will be many important things that you don't accomplish many things that are absolutely necessary that you won't do and that'll ultimately lead to your downfall right so to me that's what i interpreted from that one the third do not intend to rely on anything so this to me is that one must be okay with complete self-reliance right like in this world there's times where we know like there's certain things that we can we need others to help us accomplish right like we know that it's necessary for us to operate within the reality of living in a society and that there's people that we need help from to get things accomplished or to have certain resources and I don't think this is going against that. I think what this this is saying that don't become dependent on anything or anybody, right? Don't become dependent on like a family member who has always been there for you in the past. Don't depend on them to always bail you out because there'll come a time when they can't or they won't or they'll refuse. Don't become dependent on your even your partner, like your husband or wife to be the one that like always saves you or gets you out of something where like if you're depressed or something like that you always go to like your husband or wife to get you into the correct mindset but he's saying that reliance or dependence on things outside of yourself is always fleeting and volatile because in the external world things always change right and to depend completely on something outside of yourself means that you're leaving yourself open to to chance right and by if and if that's where your locus of control is at, if that's where everything that makes you you or makes you happy is dependent on outside forces then you'll never have real happiness or peace right and to me that's what i gather from that one the next consider yourself lightly and consider the world deeply to me this commandment goes into the reality that sometimes we get so caught up in our own mental state or our own thought process or the little going ons in our lives that we basically think that we are the center of the world right like our problems become the most important thing that are happening right now and we start to be our own little island or our own little planet and everything revolves around the way that we're feeling right and that shapes our interactions with ourselves. that shapes our interactions with other people and that can be very we talked about volatility right like that can be volatile and it's also an ineffective way with interacting with the world right because in reality this isn't to say that an individual's um an individual's troubles 
are insignificant. That's not what this, I don't think this is what this means. And that's not what I'm saying either. Like your troubles are your troubles, but it's also important to keep perspective and a little bit of space and distance from your troubles as well, right? Consider the fact that the world is a big place and that there are many people out there with a lot of troubles and trying your best to realize the fact that your troubles right now might seem extremely significant, but try to keep in perspective how important they are in the grand scheme of things, right? Is this going to be something that you remember 10 years from now, one year from now, one month from now, one week from now, even, right? The things that we have going on right now in our heads can sometimes feel so massive, but in reality, how big of a problem actually are they? And to me, this is what Musashi was kind of getting across with this is that introspection is significant and it's important to not place too much importance to ourselves and instead be willing to learn and accept the world for what it is and be a student rather than try to be the master all the time. Right. Like allow life to teach you things and to let you grow instead of constantly being in your own head about what you believe to be important. The next one, do not ever think in acquisitive terms. So for this one, I believe I'm interpreting it as don't be greedy, basically, right? Like don't be a schemer or only think about things from the standpoint of what monetary value they'll give you, right? And I think actually one of the biggest examples in real life that I'm thinking of that goes along with this part is how people look at getting a post-secondary education now, right? How people look at getting college degrees and other schooling outside of the expected K through 12. And nowadays, a higher education has literally become about with this degree, how much money can I get after this, right? They don't care about whether it's a passion project. Many people don't care about if it's a passion project. Many people don't care about the field necessarily that they're working in or the kind of work that they'll be doing a lot of people are looking at a degree as like okay if i get this i will be making a ton of money out of school and that's a dangerous thought process right and to me i think the danger comes in with if you don't truly have a passion for something you're gonna burn out and you're gonna be miserable um when it comes to something that if your sole focus for a job is the fact that like okay it brings in a lot of money then it can be good for that time where you're getting the cash but that's not going to help you get through the hardships that come as a natural part of working in any job if you let's say that i'm someone who loves making music and i decide to take on the job of being a professional musician instead of being an accountant now if I'm a professional musician, there's going to be phases where I go through a drought, right? Where like, if I can't book any gigs, if I can't get any concerts going because it's a slow season or people don't have the money to spend on entertainment right now, there's going to be difficulties. But if I'm truly in love with music, if I'm truly a musician and that's what I enjoy doing, then I'm going to have the wherewithal and the, the motivation to make it through those difficult parts because I love music so much, right? Like I'll find a way to get through the jobs. Maybe I'll take on another part-time job. Maybe I'll search harder and look outside of my comfort zone for gigs, stuff like that. Like I'll find a way to make it work because I love music and my love for music is what's going to carry me through that. But let's say that I'm really a musician at heart, but I take on this accounting job and something comes up where I have like this big deadline that hits out of nowhere or something just unexpected comes out of the blue. In that case, it's going to be much harder for me to muster up the motivation and the energy necessary to get through the hardship that I'm facing because I don't care about this job, right? It's going to, it's already been stressing me out. I don't really love it or care about it. It's on, I'm only doing it as a, for stability and money. And if something like that should come out of the blue and I have to deal with the difficulties of the reality of this job, I'm going to have a lot harder time being resilient towards it because my, my heart's not in it. That's not where my passion's at. 
and to me this is what musashi means is that if you're only thinking about things from the monetary point of view then eventually you're going to fail yourself and you're going to lead to your own downfall because money isn't going to be a strong enough motivator to get you through the difficulties of life the next do not regret things about your own personal life so i think this one is a lot has a lot to do with mental health again and actually a lot of these have to do with um stability and one's own mental health but to me the importance of this lies in the avoidance of depression right because in a lot of ways that's what depression is is it's a state of mind where your brain is constantly living in the past you're living in regrets you're thinking about all the things you didn't do you're thinking about all the bad things that happened to you and musashi in this point is seems to be making the statement that living your life in the past and thinking about all the things that didn't happen for you can only lead to detrimental things because the past is already done right the past doesn't exist anymore the past is gone and all you have is right now and if you're constantly living in the past and thinking about all the bad things that happened to you your reality is gone and you're not even living anymore you don't have a current and since the current is all that we have since right now in this moment is the only thing we got living in the past is basically you're a walking zombie right like you're the living dead and going back to what we said about mental health and the point that musashi's been trying to make in order to survive and make it through these difficult times living in the past is one of the most detrimental mistakes that you can make next do not envy another's good or evil so in this musashi talks about not envying the good that somebody goes through and not relishing in the bad that they go through right and to me the main point of this one is to basically say mind your own business right <laughs> in a in a really um in a really philosophical sense and in a nice way he's saying don't be so worried about what other people are doing right i heard this reminds me of a quote that I heard a little while ago that um, somebody's uh, track coach told him that the worst thing that you can do to, in a race is to look to your left or your right. And the best thing to do when you're in a race is to keep your head down or up. Well, you know, depending on like technique and stuff, keep your head focused straight ahead on the path in front of you and move at your own pace and do the best that you can do. Right. When you're so focused on the competition, you're never going to make any forward progress because you're so worried about what everybody else is doing. If you want to get somewhere, if you want to have peace of mind and you want to be the best version of yourself that you can be then your focus needs to be placed internally right don't worry about how good or how bad the next person is doing because that doesn't have anything to do with you if you want to make something of yourself and you want to get somewhere then the focus has to be internal not on the people around you the next do not lament parting on any road whatsoever so this kind of goes along with his previous um, discussion on not living in regrets, right? Where sometimes we make a choice, <coughs> excuse me, where sometimes we make a choice and after it's done, maybe it doesn't turn out the way we hoped. And we're like, oh man, I can't believe this. I shouldn't have done this. I should have done that other thing because this would have turned out way better. And this is a cognitive bias that we all have, right? This is all have sometimes and it's something that we all have to actively be aware of is that we think in our head because one choice didn't turn out well then the other choice was actually the good one because that was we would have clearly been happy if we would have took it because we're not happy now so that means the other thing must have been better and in reality that is not the case right just because things might not have worked out perfect now doesn't mean that the other thing that you would have picked would have worked out either we have this weird habit of like fortune telling or trying to read the future and act like we know what would happen based on past events and you have no idea how that path would have turned out right so the only thing that you can do is focus on the choices that you've made currently and try to make the road that you're on right now the best that it can possibly be because that's all you got if you can't go back in the past and redo that uh, choice and if you could there's no telling that it would have been better anyway so 
don't lament on setting out on the path you're on and instead try to try to work with it right try to make it the best that you can because in reality you don't know how it could turn out things in life are fickle things in life change on a constant basis and just because something's terrible something is terrible right now doesn't mean that it's always going to be terrible right and i think musashi was really keyed into human nature and the way things work and i think this is why this is something that he put in the dokodo right it's something important to remember is to not regret your uh, your choices and if you're on a path be confident about it and see where it goes because you never know how it could turn out next do not complain or feel bitterly about yourself or others and this goes back to i think not envying other people and things like that or not putting focus on what other people are doing he's basically saying that you're things are fine you're going to be okay and you're fine the way that you are don't be so focused on like what could have been or feeling bad about certain aspects of yourself that you can't change or things that you can't do anything about because focus on problems that cannot be solved or things that cannot be changed only serves to take away from you it only serves in your detriment so learning to appreciate the things that you do have being appreciative about the things about yourself that are good with you the situation that you're in and finding things that do make it do make it okay right things that you might not necessarily see if you're so focused on the pessimistic aspect of it you you can change your thing so you can change things that way right if you're solely focused on everything that's wrong all the issues with yourself and all the other people that wronged you and just looking at life that way then you leave no opportunity for growth maturity and for anything to change and i think that's why he put this in there as well is that complaining or feeling bitterly about yourself and others serves no no effective purpose next have no heart for approaching the path of love now you know this is probably one of the most complex ones for me and i think to really understand this one i think oh give me a second guys I think to really understand this one, we have to try to be objective about the kind of Percy that person that Musashi was and the life that he lived. Um, Musashi was a person whose life was devoted to the blade and martial combat. He was somebody who lived his life on a battlefield and dueled others and combat and literal moral combat and literal moral combat right like um where you battled somebody and then one person wasn't going to be walking away so he constantly placed his life on the line and when you live that way having traditional relationships and family and like love affairs and stuff like that that doesn't make any sense right it's it doesn't make sense to attach yourself and to be in like a long-term loving romantic relationship or have partners and stuff like that when you literally don't know what tomorrow is going to be like when the next battle is going to be your last battle and your life is so so different compared to the normal persons and this tenant about having no uh heart for the approaching the path of love i have to wonder if this was wasn't a byproduct of his living by living truly by the way of the blade right where like living truly by the the prescripts of what it means to be a warrior and if you're truly somebody that's living the life of a warrior you don't have a lot of place for traditional loving relationships unfortunately so I kind of take it take it from that end that this is where this is where this belief comes from but also I wonder if Musashi didn't think that loving people or loving romantically weakened you in some way right like it gave you 
room for regret it gave you room for fear out of what you might lose and i can understand that honestly it's it sounds cold and it sounds messed up maybe to some people but if you think about it if you're somebody that's a soldier or a warrior and your life has lived in extreme circumstances of constant combat and death always kind of looming over you if you are somebody who has a wife and kids that you love so much that you want to see every night when you come home that you constantly want to go back to you're going to live with a lot of fear of what might happen or just you of regret of like if you don't get to see them anymore and when you're in combat when you're somebody that's sorry guys i got a siren out here hold on okay but yeah when you're somebody that's living in that sort of circumstance then family is almost a liability right like it's a weakness for you because it'll all it can put that sort of um second guessing in the back of your head at all times and if you have that and you're in a situation that calls for absolute bravery or disregard for your life in order for you to make it out of that situation alive then you putting yourself in trying circumstances right like you're putting yourself in a bad spot so to me that's where the idea of having no part heart for the path of love comes from it comes from the reality of being a warrior and especially a warrior in the circumstances that he was because he was one in every sense of the word right and i think to me this is where that tenet comes from and the main idea behind that the next one do not have preferences so i think with this one mushashi was stating that the reason it's it's preferable to not have preferences is because you're not always going to get what you want right like if you live a life where you're constantly saying that oh i like this and i don't like that or you're always being selective about a lot of things you can't live you it's like he talked about in the first the first uh tenant right it's like he talked about in the first um the first excerpt where it says do not turn your back in the ways of this the various ways of this world and the the way that the world works you're not always going to get your preference right like you're not always going to get what you want and sometimes you just got to take what you get so if you're somebody with all these preferences about what you like what you don't like what you will do what you won't do then you're not living in reality because you can't always have that and again if you're not living in reality that leaves you open for attack makes you weaker and can potentially end your life in certain scenarios so the idea of not having preferences or the importance of not having preference i believe goes along with that train of thought the next one says do not harbor hopes for your own personal home so for this one how i'm interpreting it is that one should not have these great expectations necessarily for how their home is supposed to look and and be or don't expect to be able to even necessarily have a home to go to because if you're a vagabond everybody go read that manga by the way yeah that pun was absolutely intended if you're a vagabond and you're a person that's living the life of a warrior and truly living it you're going to be a person that's traveling from place to place never having really any time to settle down and again you've kind of forfeited your life you got no time to to sit down and establish the same connections that other people might because your life is such a fleeting thing and and it's always like that right in reality all of our lives are fleeting but when you're a person engaged in constant battle it's even more so where you don't know if the next fight can be your last and to me when he talks about not having harboring hopes for your own personal home that means don't have expectations about like setting up a family or having your place looking a certain way when you've devoted your life to the way of the blade basically uh be understanding that you are your circumstances are going to be determined by what reality is and reality isn't always going to give you this mansion with all the amenities and all the resources you need and you should learn to be okay with that you should learn that 
having less isn't a bad thing and that you can survive with a lot less than you probably think you can. The next one says, do not having have a liking for delicious food for yourself. And I think, again, this goes back to the preferences part, right? Where if you're somebody that only eats the finest foods or it must have this portion size in order to eat a meal and you're really selective about that kind of thing, then you again set yourself up for not being able to survive in situations when you don't have access to those kind of things because you're not always going to have access to that by any stretch of the imagination and especially if you're living the life of a warrior and also for your health and everything right like if you're constantly addicted to like these delicious foods and all this other sort of stuff i'm actually looking at it from like a nutrition standpoint as well where like a lot of those foods probably aren't good for you and you need your body to be as effective and able to move and do the things that it needs to do so being addicted to food or being addicted to eating a certain way is unhealthy for a significant number of reasons let's see the next one says do not carry antiques handed down from generation to generation so this one i've had to do a lot of thinking about um the main reason that i think that the that i believe he had this tenant about not carrying down antiques is because and i imagine especially during his time like having family heirlooms and like this sword was passed down from generation to generation by our father's father father and like we can never be defeated as long as this blade runs in our family and then you go out in the battlefield and die <laughs> like it's to me he didn't see the importance or the reality and putting sentimental weight onto generational items because at the end of the day they're just material things and items right there there's no use in holding on to such worldly and fleeting things because they don't they aren't necessary for you right it gives you an attachment to the physical and having your it uh, goes back to again the things that he talked about earlier where having attachments to physical things and worldly pleasures being your only source of happiness and external things being your only source of happiness it leads you down a path of demise basically it leads you down a path of being of your lords being physical possessions and we talked already about the reasons that that kind of leads to one's downfall so to me that's kind of the train of thought that i that i went on when discussing his uh thought on antiques being passed down and next it says do not fast so that it f affects you physically so a lot of the times right um there can be certain religions or spiritual belief systems that calls for one to fast or refrain from eating for a certain amount and it sounds like Musashi was aware of a lot of these teachings and understood that like this is a part of some regimens, but in order to function at the capacity that you need to, don't starve yourself so that you're no longer capable of the minimum physical health and effort it takes to live one's life and especially live one's life on the battlefield. So to me, that's kind of what I got from that one. The next, it says, while it's different from military equipment, do not be fond of material things so this goes right back to our discussion on materialism and stuff right where he makes the point that while it's different from military equipment because where for him as a warrior the state of your swords your spears your knives and these other items that that's very significant when you're somebody who lives their life on the basis of the weapons that you're carrying those hold massive weight and those can be the difference between making it out of battle alive or not so having attention to detail and caring deeply for your military equipment is a survival tactic but outside of that much like he discussed with um the antiques being passed down from generation to generation and things like that a fondness for material things only leads your only leads your happiness in your center of peace being connected to the physical world in sort of shallow shallow possessions and this is not something that is going to 
help somebody that's on the path of self-reliance or somebody that intends to be a warrior the take care of your equipment but don't hold on to other worldly possessions because they're not necessary and this also goes a lot back to the tenets of buddhism actually um, and if you if i know we haven't discussed it but a whole lot of these um of these teachings of within the dokodo have a lot of roots in buddhism despite the fact that musashi didn't necessarily consider himself a buddhist at all you can definitely tell that he was influenced by buddhist teachings because these philosophies about not holding on to material things about taking the world deeply and considering yourself lightly about not being envious of others or like lamenting the path that you're on a lot of these are things that if you study buddhism or other eastern philosophies you can definitely see a lot of parallels and i think that it's interesting to think about and put that in context how musashi was likely influenced by many of the teachings of buddhism himself since he was alone a great deal of the time i'm imagining he had so much time for introspection and thought it's interesting to see his thought process and how this may have influenced him as well so the next while on the way do not begrudge death and we've discussed this one a bit already, but if you're considering putting yourself on the path of the warrior or going down this path of the martial arts, then you have to realize that death is a reality. It's an inevitability. And it's like the old saying goes, you live by the sword, die by the sword, right? If you're going to live this way, eventually you're going to die on the battlefield too. So if you truly plan to depart down this path and you're going to live it without any regrets, then you need to accept that death is going to be something that you're going to be no stranger to the next do not be intent on possessing valuables or a thief in old age going back again to his thoughts on the possession of um, worldly and physical objects if you're somebody who's departing down the path of the warrior or just independence and minimalism like he's been discussing throughout this excerpt then it's important to not expect to be to come into some great pension or having some huge retirement fund or fief that you're going to come into when you're older because that's not the reality of your life right like you're not spending your life uh working and just building up these possessions and amassing wealth like other people are you have to be cognizant of the fact that living this minimalist of a lifestyle is going to be a lifestyle and it's going to be like that for the rest of your life and there's not to say there's anything wrong with this it's not a bad thing on the contrary right a lot of this is talking about the value of living this way and the way that it helps you find a sort of peace but he's basically discussing not having regrets about living this kind of life and realizing that you can't expect to come upon riches when you get older and that when going back to it all goes back to the value of um physical possessions and basically denouncing denouncing those things denouncing uh, an addiction to the physical world or the things that other people say you should have to be happy because one realizes if they're on this path that those are not things that are needed next respect the gods and the buddhas but do not depend on them and this uh, uh, goes back to our brief conversation a little bit ago about like the Buddhism and the philosophy as the spiritual philosophy aspect of the Dokodo and he clearly he respects Buddhism and the uh, the idea of there being gods in this world that do potentially have a place and have a uh, some control over the way like fate works and just other stuff like that he acknowledges spirituality but by that same token he says do not depend on them for strength or to get you out of a fight right when he talks about this it appears to me that the way musashi lived his life was only he the only thing he depended on was himself and his own personal merits he depended on his training his learning his instincts these were the things that he utilized to get himself through combat and to get himself through the hardships of day-to-day -day life and dependence on the gods and the buddhas to get you through a fight and to get you through hard times just seemed foolish right because this it 
to me, he's saying that this isn't their place. That they may be there and ruling or watching over the world or whatever your belief system might be. But ultimately, the only thing that's going to change, change you, protect you, allow you to grow, get you through these difficult times is going to be yourself, your training and the choices that you make. Next, though you give up your life, do not give up your honor. And this is a very, to me, a very Japanese sort of um, outlook on the world, right? Where we can't forget the cultural context that Musashi lived, lived within, where the, in the samurai code, it was if one was seen to have shamed themselves so and brought embarrassment upon either themselves or their house, then suicide was the only option. And one would have to bring, put up their own life their own head and penance for the shame that they brought onto themselves or others. And Musashi discusses this too, where he clearly he states that even though you may die on the battlefield or you may die in combat, to him giving up honor was a greater sin and a greater loss than losing one's life. And I think that this is something that I would probably like to get into in another video where in many warriors heads and there's other people that think like this too right even nowadays that want death before dishonor is a really popular tagline that you see sometimes in certain communities and other places and i like to have a discussion on like that thought process right to what what is it about honor and respect that is so significant where somebody would rather give up their life than give up their good name or the the respect that they hold for themselves i think that's absolutely worth talking about and also i think it has an element of survival in it too as much as an oxym oxymoron that be uh, giving up one's honor can be tantamount to death in certain situations and i think that'd be something that we can have a really cool discussion on at some other point and finally the last uh, precept in musashi's dokodo states that one should never depart from the way of the martial arts. So if one decides to go down this path and they're truly committing themselves to the undertaking, then you have to remember that it's important to never depart from the way. Because if you do, then the way will depart from you as well. And you'll, you'll lose that. You'll lose the confidence. You'll lose the all these things that he talked about within this have to do with following one's path to the end whatever that may mean and the last piece that he leaves us with is never departing from the way that you chose and for him that was the martial arts and that's man this this thing's so cool this reading to me man this whole thing is so amazing because it just encapsulates what musashi was right like who and what he was as a person and i i could probably talk about this thing for like another hour man but we'll get ready to end it here i in the comments definitely let me know what you guys thought like if you have any other thoughts about this or if you looked at it a different way or if you didn't dis you disagreed with one of the my interpretations of something and you had another way of looking at it let me know because i feel like there's so many ways that you can interpret some of this stuff and i want to hear what other people think too um i don't know man like this is just it's such a powerful way to live and it's it's difficult too right like that's something that can't be understated man like taking things for the way they are on the surface seems like well duh i mean how else are you gonna do it but that's not reality right like if we if you have any sort of awareness about the way things are right now then it's apparent that many people do not live in reality right many people live in this deluded sort of bubble where they have they live in an echo chamber right where everybody around them has the same point of view and they always have other people surrounding them telling them how right they are and how what they're doing is the best thing and just people live in this sort of just this room of constant just a feedback loop and that's so dangerous because you lose track of what the hell is actually going on out there you lose track of what real life looks like what other people think the fact that 
your opinion isn't the only opinion. The fact that what you think isn't the most important thing and losing that perspective is no small thing. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me through through this reading. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video.